Before we go, we're joined by uh, comedian Greg Warren. In, uh, uh, are you in front of a brick wall? What's going on? He's a funny guy. Yes, yes. Uh, well, it, uh, in all honesty, Tom, it's a it's a faux brick wall. It's not a real brick wall. It's, uh, <laughs> that looks good, man. That looks really yeah, good. It's a curtain. It's a curtain that I uh, I had a, a corporate gig, a virtual gig, uh, the other day, and I I didn't uh, switch it out. Oh, okay, cool. Huh? Did you sit or stand? I stood. I leaned. I leaned on the wall. I had uh, a dress shirt on and shorts. And nice. I could not see the shorts. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's pretty great. Yeah. Could you hear them laughing? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> were they Were they laughing? I choose to believe they were. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, wouldn't that be hard to do? Because yeah. you wouldn't know when to pick up your next joke? Because yeah. you know if yeah. they're still if it laughing? Was easy, everybody would do it. That's Christy. right. <laughs> you know what wasn't hard? Cashing that check. <laughs> That's right. That's right, baby. That's right. <laughs> so, so you're doing your thing at home in front of a yes. camera. And how many yes. people were sitting in an office watching you? Oh, I, a handful. I think there was uh, there were uh, offices all over the country, uh, 40 or 50, I think, at this particular one. Oh, I see. Oh, so they weren't sitting yeah. together. No, no, they were. This has uh, become you know, a real, I mean, ever since the pandemic. Pat, you've done one yeah. of these, haven't you? No, I haven't. Oh, you, okay, no. yeah. Yeah, mm. they're, uh, a I lot think of I'd storm off. <laughs> 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 so, I mean, do you allow space... And, uh, assuming that there's going to be a laugh in one particular part, you you pause and go, and they're they're chuckling right now. <laughs> sure, I, I don't want to seem arrogant, but yes, I act as if there's. Uh, I believe there's laughter. Okay. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. Do they have any way? Do, do they have any way to heckle you? Uh, yeah, they can. You know, it's it's interesting. They can unmute their thing, but uh, oh. um. You don't want them all unmuting it because then you just hear like dogs and, and, <laughs> and right. I I've had to learn this to, through several different uh, iterations during the pandemic. So usually I I'm like, hey, why don't you guys have like three people keep their the mute button off, like the people who are in charge, just so I can hear something in case we have a mm. tech problem. But yeah, mm, yeah. So, this might not. It's not uh, the easiest thing to do. This might not uh, uh, translate to you, Greg. But uh, have you ever heard of a drive-in? Maybe you should try one yes. of those. Yeah, and like when people are laughing, they could honk their horns or flash their lights or <laughs> I like that chick. Something I like, like that. that. A lot. Yeah, yeah. A lot. I'll tell you what, though, chick. That's a lot of that's a lot of people go to those drive-ins. That seems like a big venue for oh, me. Oh yeah. Well, maybe maybe not just you. Maybe you know three or four comedians. <laughs> Get a couple of big guys that yeah, I can yeah. open for. Me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. Yeah. Uh, uh, Greg, maybe maybe Josh and Pat. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. 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 Come out and host. It'd be a big evening. There we go. Now we got a show. Now we got, now a, show. We got a show. Damn right. Now, uh, Greg will be doing his thing on a traditional stage Friday evening, December 29th at the Rolling Hills Casino in Corning, California. And then Sunday, December 31st, Amerant Bank Arena. Nate Bargatze, and you'll be opening for him in Miami. That's pretty cool. Sunday, yeah, December yeah. 31st. That'll be fun. be fun. Um, now, when you do this thing where you're doing your show for people online like that, do you have somebody intro you? Yes, yes, usually the, you know, the boss or somebody like that, the HR uh, person or the boss, yeah. Do they go on camera and go, like, read your credits and... Yeah, yeah, I mean, I've learned sort of, um, to, they always feel the need to, like, get a bio off the internet and read the entire thing, and I, I've i really, really implored them not to do that, because mm -hmm. you can just see people being like, mm -hmm. oh, my God, who does this idiot... Greg mean? Warren was born <laughs> in the St. Louis area. <laughs> <and he lived laughs> there. That's, 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 so, that's always the worst. That's what happens. After a yep. brief stint at West Point, and <laughs> yeah, I'm like, yeah. oh, God, come on, yeah. just yeah. say he was on Comedy Central and <laughs> shut up, yeah. please. Yeah. Right. Okay. Now, do, you, do you make fun of the head guy in charge or anything like that, or does that ever... No. Oh, oh, I yeah. usually, I don't do that. Yeah, uh, right. I, I did a little bit of one, a live one uh, last week, but, you know, I kind of I kind of know these days about how much you can do that. Yeah, the chick and I learned that the hard way. Right. Oh, they, they and make they, fun of the boss. He loves that uh, stuff. We were, uh, <laughs> yeah. at, at, the, at the very last minute, somebody canceled, so chick and I volunteered to do this uh, military show. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It which was, was, it was really fun. It was really cool, but, and, and we didn't have time to prepare anything, and it was they were all in dress dress blues, whatever. Right. Wow. And um, I I sat with, um, I, I quite literally sat with the general who was retiring. And, you know, this guy's kept coming up. He's going, oh, man, you got to make fun of generals. So, you, know, you, you got, he just, he'll love it. 
So I got up there and I said, well. He'll love it. <laughs> you, know, you know how this goes, Greg. So I got up there and go, well, you know, go over to uh, General Johnson. I uh, talked to a lot of people here and they say they, they uh, you, you know, a lot has been accomplished. And they, they couldn't have done it without you. They would have preferred doing it without you. Total silence. Oh, Total silence. Yeah, yeah, man. People terrified yeah. to laugh. The, yeah, the, you know, had, had the general chuckled a little bit, maybe we would have gotten something. But, yeah, making fun oh. of the boss. They always want you to do it. Then if you do it, it bombs. Yeah, you know, these guys are armed, a lot of them. Oh, um, yeah. The yeah. Military guys. yeah. Make fun of the boss's wife. He loves that. Yeah. No, 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 no. Yeah, okay. Uh, what's our topic for today, Greg? Uh, it's an important topic. I want to talk about the history of Jane Fonda's workout tapes. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. These things. This was fascinating to me. Uh, back in uh, 1978, Jane was already a, a double uh, Academy Award winning actress for Clute and Coming Home. Um, and uh, she kept in shape by doing ballet. She grew up uh, uh, doing ballet. Mm -hmm. And she broke her ankle filming China Syndrome. And she, um, rehabbing, she couldn't do ballet. Uh, so she attended a workout class in Century City. Uh, it was taught by a woman named Lenny Kasdan, and it was long duration exercise. Hmm. Uh, think sort of uh, early aerobics classes. Lenny was a smoker. Uh, <laughs> I don't think that was part of the class. I wish it, I wish it was. <laughs> And one, and two, and three, and four, and uh, uh, Jane said uh, it, it was a time when uh, challenging physical exercise was not offered to women. We weren't supposed to sweat or have muscles. Now, along with 40 women, I found myself moving nonstop for an hour and a half in entirely new ways. So Jane and Lenny opened up uh, a studio. They had a, a workout studio in Beverly Hills, and Jane Fonda taught uh, aerobics classes in the mornings. Can you imagine that? <laughs> no. In 1979, um, she was like a superstar, and you could pay 32 bucks and work out in her studio for a week. She had two to 3,000 students a week. Uh, 32 bucks to work out with a double uh, Oscar-winning actress, uh, uh, today, uh, it would cost you 150 bucks to go to Comic Con and get Bud Bundy's autograph. <laughs> <laughs> so, so Jane, uh, uh, she wrote a book, an exercise book, to go along with this. Oh yeah, that was called Anti-American Loudmouth. Is that what? It was? <laughs> I was hoping we weren't going to go there. I picked Tom oh. to be the first. Oh one yeah, to go well, well yeah. Give, give him time. He's, yeah, he's was, loading it up. It was yeah, yeah. thirty-five <laughs> bucks or free if you brought a flag from Hanoi. Yeah, there you I, go. I was yeah. just going to say uh, the, the key word is Hanoi. Hanoi. Yeah, I, I knew we were going to get there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Jane, you know, Jane doesn't feel good about a lot of that stuff. Ah, uh, she feels just fine. No, she doesn't. <laughs> she regrets it. Um, really? She released an album. Did you guys know? She released, before the videotapes, she had uh, an LP, Jane Fonda's workout record. It went double platinum. Really? It was basically her shouting exercise instruction and uh, music underneath by the Jacksons. Uh, Ario Speedwagon, Quincy Jones, and Boz Skaggs. No kidding. Man, I'm buying that record just to hear the Boz Skaggs work out. <laughs> <laughs> Lead off. Oh, let's go. One, two, three. I, I prefer no, the, I uh, the shuffle, sure. Five more, two more. Yeah, <laughs> yeah or uh, JoJo, dig those spinning lights. Dig the spinning lights, everyone. Look up. Let's go. Dig your necks up. Dig them. Dig them. I don't think you're digging in the back deep enough. <laughs> Look out behind you. JoJo's got his gun. <laughs> Everybody look behind you all the way back. Yeah. You in the back, you're not look. JoJo might have a gun back there. So, so she started with a vinyl record prior to the VHS tapes? She did, um, and uh, it was successful, Tom. And then there's this guy named Stuart Carl. He's sort of the, the brains behind this. Stuart's an interesting guy, uh, made his money originally uh, in the trade magazine business. He, that, <laughs> he, he, he did trade magazines for waterbeds, saunas, and spas. Mm. That's an oily 70s dirtbag. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And then he he got the idea that there should be instructional videos. He he did a lot with uh, you guys. Remember uh, Dick Barrymore's ski films? 
I do not. No. Uh, I remember ski films. I don't know about yeah. Dick Barrymore. Wasn't it Miller? Yeah. Howard Miller? Yeah. Um, or something? Yeah. Hmm. So th this guy, like, instructed. He said he did everything between Deep Throat and Jaws. This occupied all the space between porn and, you know, traditional theatrical uh, releases. So hi him and his wife are walking one day, and she sees uh, Jane Bonda's exercise book in a bookstore and says, you know what, I, I wish I could work out at home. I, I hate the gym. Hmm. Uh, and he got the idea, and he he, he bugged uh, uh, Jane. He wound up calling Jane's husband's political campaign office. Thomas Hayden uh -huh. was her husband back then. And uh, and he put her in touch with Jane, and, and he bugged her and bugged her, and she's like, okay, uh, we'll do it. Um, and they they spent 50 grand to shoot this video. Uh, Christy, did you ever do these things? Yes. Yes. I, I did. They yeah, were great workout it, tapes. In fact, I think they are still out there. People yeah, love them. They, she sold 17 million copies. The first the first video was 60 bucks in 1982. That's wow. a lot of money. What? Yeah. yeah. A ton oh, yeah. of money. Yeah. yeah. And um it, it was uh it was a big success. Uh that year, uh it, in the first year it did uh it sold like two hundred thousand, uh, which was more than Star Trek two. Whoa. Um Guys, I tried to work out to Star Trek too. It's a terrible workout. <laughs> yeah. oh, boy. I can still see the cover of that VHS tape. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you got Christy, Khan there. Yeah. You got uh, Kirk and Spock. Oh, no, you mean Jane Fonda. The Jane yeah, Fonda yeah, one. Yeah, I see. Uh, she's doing yeah. a V-sit. She wore, like, leotard, like, ballet yeah. stuff, right? Yeah. yeah. Leotard and she's doing, like, a V-sit. Yeah, Pol Pot yeah, and Ho Chi Minh are there. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, yeah, she wasn't wearing black pajamas? <laughs> no, she wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> um... She thought it would be a a, a flop. Uh, she said she, that she didn't own a VCR back then. Only uh, less than 10% of households in 82 owned a wow. VCR. And then everybody did. Mm -hmm. it was like, it, yeah, she, she said she thought it was going to be a flop. We were like, no, no, Jane. Uh, it's not a flop. Stanley and Iris, that was a flop, Jane. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it was directed by a guy named uh, Sid Gallanty. Um, and Sid had uh, experience with political ads. He directed a lot of those political ads back hmm. then. Yeah. Which, uh, the early uh, early version of these tapes, uh, the unedited version <laughs> was, uh, you know, a little more political, you know. Your thighs are sponging off the rest of your butt. <laughs> <laughs> Tell your thighs enough is enough. <laughs> Send them home from Washington. <laughs> uh, yeah. It was, uh, it, like I said, at, uh, 17 million copies. Number 75 on the 85 most disruptive ideas in history. Wow. Ooh. Right above the uh, the Bolshevik Revolution, actually. Uh, <laughs> oh, really kind of his step by step, hand in hand, really. Yeah. Uh, From one comedy to another. <laughs> <laughs> it, it was touching if you read, like, some of the YouTube comments underneath the videos. Uh, like, a lot of women talk about, yeah, I, I used to do this with my mom. Like, like these, yeah. these little girls did it with their mom, hmm. you know? They talked about how great shape their mom got in. Um, and it was a big deal because, like, I guess back then in the the only way to work out was, uh, you know, in the gym for women. And a lot of women hated going to the gym. They thought it was uh, creepy. And um, so working out at home was a better choice. I had an older cousin um, that <laughs> used to go to the gym back then in the early 80s and stare at women. And he... <laughs> He received none of these uh, the money from that. And we have a we have a new story coming up about the resurgence of so called tape heads yeah. in the world of VHS. Oh, uh, really? Yeah, it, that's a a new story just happened to be breaking today about um, the resurgence of V. It's like kind of like the vinyl thing for records. Except oh, yeah. For, there's certain that movies apparently only available on VHS. I can't imagine what they are, but huh. we'll find out about that. Well, Greg, uh, once again, Greg Warren will be uh, uh, doing his thing at the. Uh, the uh, Rolling Hills Casino, Courting, California, Friday, December 29th. And then Miami with Nick Bargatze coming up on New Year's Eve. Thanks very much, Greg. Have a great, Thanks, uh, have a great holiday. Thanks, guys. Merry Christmas to you. Yeah, you Christmas, too, man. Greg. Always a pleasure. Josh. 
Yes, Don't sir. Don't you come back to St. Louis and not call your friends. <laughs> you know I won't. <laughs> I mean, not I won't not. Is there we go. Well, very good, very good. He'll call you. Either way, you wouldn't call Craig, right? <laughs> well, yeah. Okay, now, uh, uh, oh. 